Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a review of the 1984 thriller Perfect Strangers. No, this has nothing to do with the show, with Bulky, which, which when most people think of Perfect Strangers, they think of the TV show with Bronson Pinchot. I get it, I understand. But no, this is not this is not that show. This is a different Perfect Strangers. And this is a film that is a stranger to a lot of people, including fans of Larry Cohen's films, because this is one of those movies that he did that has fallen completely through the cracks. And after seeing it, I honestly don't think it deserves that. I think this is actually a pretty decent film. It's not great. It's definitely a slow taste thriller, but it has a certain realism to it that really resonates and it's got some really solid performances by the cast uh cohen's direction is good as always it's serviceable uh, actually it's a lot better than serviceable because that's just that that's that's saying that it's just eh, it's just there i would say the direction's a lot better than that and the screenplay is very solid and it has some really great dialogue in it and overall, it's a very simple concept, a very straightforward idea involving a hood, a uh, mafia mafia guy who kills a drug dealer in an alleyway, and he, the only witness is a little boy. And he is forced by the mafia, and pressured by them, to get in a relationship with the mother of this boy, so he can infiltrate the family and then kill the kid. So there are no witnesses. But what really makes this film click, though, is that it's anchored by really strong performances by Anne Carlyle and uh, Brad Regin. And Brad Regin was also in uh, Special Effects, which Larry Cohen did the same year as Perfect Strangers. Brad Regin in this channels young John Travolta he he just just it's just it's really eerie if you watch young John Travolta and films like even the films like staying alive that came out a year before this but more 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 so uh films like of course Saturday Night Fever and you look at Brad's performance in this they are so similar they even look similar it's really kind of crazy to be honest, how, how well Brad captures that Travolta-esque energy uh, with his performance, uh, that rawness. And it's one of those films that ultimately could have easily been forgettable, could have easily been boring, which uh, honestly a lot of people find it to be uh, both of those things. I respectfully disagree. I think this is a better film than special effects, and I would definitely say it's uh, one of Cohen's most underrated films because nobody talks about this movie. Um, and it's just one of those movies that really showcases how talented of, of a director he is because he takes a thriller and something that can be very generic and adds his own flavor to it and just makes it so unique and, and uniquely Cohen. Uh, and, and a big part of it is the screenplay. I mean, there's even moments in this where it's satirizing feminism. There's like an extreme feminist character in this who's friends with Anne Carlyle's uh, character, uh, Sally. And it's, it's played by Anne Magnuson, who would actually go on to be uh, a lead in films like Making Mr. Right and so on and so forth. She didn't really go on to have that big of a career, but she did have a pretty big starring role in Making Mr. Right, which came out after this film. And she plays this character named uh, Malda, who is just this extreme feminist. And you could tell that Cohen was having fun with this character and having fun skewering her and painting her as this just total joke. And it's so much more relevant nowadays in today's day and age because of all of this just radical feminism that you see on the Internet and you see in other videos on YouTube and other things uh, in the media. So 
Cohen was way ahead of his time when it comes to that. And like I was saying earlier, just this really simple plot, but it's so effective. Like there's a scene near the end where Brad is trying to kill the kid on a swing and it's something that's just so uh, simple, but yet so horrifying because it's so plausible. I think that's another thing that really makes this film work for me is how realistic its approach is. And there are enough shots in it, though, that are very stylistic and stylish that make it so it doesn't feel like it's too uh, grounded in reality. You'll see a POV shot, for instance, uh, of uh, Brad's character Johnny spray painting the camera or, or a few other shots that show he, that he's the one that's spray painting these really memorable looking shadow graffiti on the walls uh on not on the walls but on the you know yeah really on the walls you know on the brick walls and buildings and stuff like that in uh, new york city also it helps that it's shot in new york like inside the city uh at night during the day uh looks like a little some more guerrilla filmmaking by larry cohen where he just Kind of got a camera and started shooting with these actors in the streets in New York. Uh, maybe did it without a permit. I would not be surprised if that's the case, considering his track record when it comes to shooting um, films in New York. So the film, it's directed by Larry Cohen, and his direction is as delectable as always. Like I was saying, there's just some really nice, subtle little touches here and there that I really liked. His use of shadows, his use of uh, POV shots or pans. Um, and there's other stuff too, like the cinematography uh, is very, very strange. It's got this dreamlike quality to it. it. It looks like the cameraman just smeared Vaseline all over the lens. And at times it works, but at other times it just it's just too strange. I don't quite know what Paul Glickman and Larry were going for here at times. I don't think they should have shot the film the way they did in particular sequences. It looks washed out. But other, other moments, though, it does create this dream-like, dreamlike surreal quality to it. So um, it's one of those uh, touches that is hit and miss. It's one of the aspects of the film that I thought wasn't particularly that great. But uh, not, other than that, really, there really isn't anything about this direction that I would say by Cohen is bad. I don't think it's tired. I don't think he has no passion for this. Um I honestly felt his direction in this was tighter than it was in special effects. Special effects had, it was a better looking film in terms of its cinematography. Uh, definitely had more of a budget behind it uh, and definitely was more impressive production design wise and art direction. But that was a, that's, that's a different type of film than perfect strangers is. So I'm not going to knock perfect strangers for not, you know, looking the same way. It's not trying to be lavish. It's trying to be more down to earth. It's trying to be more gritty. It's trying to be more realistic. And I think it does uh, does that rather effectively, except when it looks a little bit too blurry and out of focus or too bright. The screenplay of Larry Cohen is a, is, is a real gem. There are a lot of lines of dialogue in this just little simple sequences that i thought were so impressive uh one moment between ann carlisle and rad regin their characters uh, johnny and sally where they're starting to bond with one another and they're and brad's talking about how absurd the, st the song when the bow breaks is i that's that just shows you how great of a writer larry cohen is he finds a way to be subversive about something like a, an innocent nursery rhyme. Uh, and he actually made a lot of good points about the song. So I thought that was a really good line of dialogue. The, there was a sequence later in the film between Ann Carlyle's uh, character Sally and her ex-husband, who, who is uh, played by John Worley as Fred. And, and uh, they're meeting up with, uh, with one another in a restaurant and they share some dialogue that's really strong in that scene as well. 
And there's just, there's a lot of different moments like this. There's even a moment where Johnny is having this conversation with, with, uh, with, um, and Carlisle's character, uh, Sally's kid. And he's basically telling him, you know, keep a secret, you know, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't tell the cops that he's doing this whole thing. He's, he's, he's creating this whole scenario involving E.T. and trying to manipulate the kid into, into associating, telling the cops with E.T. dying or with him dying. And it was just something that you would think that would just be completely absurd, but it's so well written. It comes across as actually pretty compelling. So, um... Yeah, there's a lot of scenes in this that could be just the epitome of bland and uninteresting, but because of Larry Cohen's writing, it's very intriguing and it's it's definitely engaging. I really wasn't bored by the film. I, it was 91 minutes. I thought it went by at a pretty good pace. I know for a lot of people, it's not thrilling enough or it doesn't have enough excitement. It doesn't have a big body count, even though Johnny does kill quite a few people. But it's not a flashy sort of way. It's more understated. It's more subtle. But I think that's another reason why I like the film is because of its subtleness. It's and I think that's why another reason why it's so effective to me is because it's subtle. It's it's not over the top. It doesn't take that approach. And Cohen can easily do that. But this shows that he can do a more subtle film and also pull that off. That's why it's kind of a bummer this didn't do that well or didn't really leave that much of a mark. Because I think if it did, Cohen would have had more opportunities from bigger studios to, to branch out and to uh, do more serious work. This was a kind of his attempt to try to do a film that appeals to his own sensibilities, but also showcases that he can be more than just an exploitation cult film director that he can take serious stuff and do a really solid job with it but barely nobody saw it and it didn't really do much of anything i don't even know if it even got a a, a, a theatrical release or not i know special effects i don't think did it got a release later and if it did it didn't do anything it didn't really leave much of a mark like it, like i was saying earlier and um Effectively, it was, it was a stranger to the box office and to critics and audiences. One thing I definitely didn't like about this film, though, is two particular elements. One is definitely the score by Dwight Dixon. It's honestly pretty poor. It's some jazz music that doesn't really fit the mood or the atmosphere of the film. Not really a fan of that. And the editing, at times, is... Not the best uh, by Armand Leibowitz. I don't know if it was his decision to edit certain sequences a certain way or it was Larry Cohen's. Uh, either way, there are certain scenes that aren't as effective because of some really, honestly, pretty poor editing. Like one, one scene in particular just comes out of nowhere. There's like a, a pretty intent, pretense scene and then it quick cuts to a scene where... Uh, Sally or Johnny is like playing with a kid or something and it just came out of nowhere and didn't really mesh very well and then there's another sequence that just it just shows up once and that's it where it just seemed like an excuse for Larry Cohen to use the blonde actress not the same girl who was the lead uh, Zoe Tamerlis in uh, special effects but the other girl other blonde actress that was used uh fairly prominently at times in the film who was whose character was friends with uh zoe tamerlis's uh character uh that actress is used again in a scene that just comes out of nowhere it shows brad in bed with her and she's talking about how you kept talking about a baby and you didn't want to kill the baby you don't have to worry about that you know da 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 da, da. and i guess it's trying to show that he's not to be trusted because he's sleeping with another woman but it just comes across like it looks like a dream sequence because of the way it's shot. Brad even has his hair in a different style. He never has his hair slicked back like that throughout the rest of the movie. It feels like a scene that comes from a completely different movie that's just spliced into the into this film. It, it just doesn't it does not work. I would have cut that scene out entirely because it really does hurt 
what the film is trying to do at this point is trying to show you that Johnny's a character who has warts, but he's got a good heart and he's trying to do the right thing. And he legitimately has feelings for Sally. Throwing that scene in there completely undermines that. And I, I just, I just, and, and, and unlike other times where it's trying to be subversive, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I didn't care for that scene. I know it's a little scene, but it hurts the film uh, a decent amount because it it it, it kind of kills what it's building. It kind of pokes a hole in it. I don't think it completely lets all the air out because the script and the characters and the performances are strong enough to still keep things uh, afloat. But yeah, it, it definitely did not do the film any favors. And speaking of the strong performances and cast, uh, yeah, it's it's a small cast, but they all do their jobs really well. And Carlisle, I thought was a really, uh, I I thought she was. I don't know if I'd say she was amazing, but I thought she was definitely a solid performer here. Uh, she didn't really seem to get that much. After this, she's more well known for being in Liquid Sky, which I still haven't seen, which seems like a really trippy, trippy movie. Um, she was also in uh, she was she was in bit roles in other films, too. But this is one of her bigger roles, along with Liquid Sky. And she has a certain. I, I'm trying to think of the right word for it. She's got a certain strength to her in terms of her performance. Like she, she's a strong character. She's a strong actress. She's believably strong, and doesn't come across as forced or anything like that. Or she's trying too hard. Uh, she definitely has convictions, and they definitely come across very strongly. And with Brad Regin, I, like I mentioned earlier, he's just—it's a really intense performance. It's got a decent amount of layers to it as well. Like, this is a guy who, ultimately, in the end of the film, when he does meet his demise at the hands of his, what what you're insinuated to believe is his lover, other than that one throwaway scene, it is kind of tragic. Because he ultimately did not, spoilers, he ultimately did not kill the kid. It looked like he was going to. He kidnapped the kid. He took him to the docks. He had him in his arms. And he said, I'm sorry, Matthew. And it looked like he was just going to drop him in the water. But he doesn't do it. He brings him back to his mother's uh, apartment. So he's saying he's sorry. And because she's figured out that he's this criminal, she doesn't want to take any chances. And because she already assumes that he's killed, killed her son... So she stabs him in the chest. And it, it's that it's that bit of heart to that role and to that character that makes it that character of Johnny so much more compelling. He's not one note. He's not just a uh, two-bit hood. There's more to him. There's also some bits of backstory you hear about in lines of dialogue, like he was actually in the war. He was in Vietnam. There's even a scene where one of one of his uh, mafia guys is, you know, the the and the henchman is trying to to the to the boss is trying to you know find a way to convince him to kill the kid. Um, actually, no, I think it's actually his boss, and he's saying, you know, you didn't have a problem killing killing kids in uh, in the war, now, did you? And he's like, you know, well, that was different because, you know, that that was a job. And, you know, it was it was I was given orders like it, it just, you know, it was just a part of what was going on. And um, they're basically trying to get him to look at it the same way. That conflict that's going on with this character is in a lot of ways the anchor of this film. And I, I think it's a pretty strong anchor for the most part. I, I, if you don't get that invested in the characters, if you don't think the performances are that strong or the dialogue is that compelling, then you're going to find this to be a, a pretty tedious film. But if you're, if you are able to 
grasp onto all of those things, I definitely think you, you, you're going to find some enjoyment and, and some definite entertainment out of this particular film. Um, yeah, I, I would say if you want to see a Larry Cohen film that dials back some of the uh, over-the-top um, trying to think of the right word because I, I don't want it. The cheesy doesn't work because that does not that does not describe uh, his work. A uh, camp. If you if you want to see if uh, uh, one of his films that dials back the camp and isn't as over the top and is more grounded in reality, then I definitely recommend uh, checking out Perfect Stranger sometime because it is a very unique uh, film to watch to see that side of Larry Cohen. Now, I don't really know what else to say about the film, uh, except if I were to rate it out of five stars. I liked the film a, a decent amount. Uh, like I said, the problems I had with it involved the editing, involved some of the screenplay, although the screenplay for the most part is really strong. I will say the subplot with the ex-husband I don't think is as strong as the main one, but it has its moments. I also don't think his performance was really that great. It was all right, uh, John Worley, but I don't know. He just came across as like a poor man's Joe Piscopo to me. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I I really do feel that someone else should have played that role. Would have been much stronger. Uh, and Stephen Lack is still pretty bad, uh, but thankfully he's only in this for a little bit. Unlike in Scanners, where he's given way too much uh, screen time. And he's asked to carry the film. He's not asked to carry the film here as Lieutenant Burns. So he does okay. But, I mean, honestly, could easily have had somebody else play the role and, and might have done a better job. Because his character doesn't really do that much, doesn't get that much to do, and doesn't really leave that much of an impression. Uh, and, uh, like I said, the score it does not help the film really at all and some of the cinematography i'm not too fond of but overall i think it's a pretty decent film i i would say it's a three and a half out of five star flick i don't think it's average because saying it's average would say that i just thought it was okay and i wasn't really that uh enamored by it and, and, and I, I can't really say that about the film. It's not a great film. It's not a four-star flick. It's not a five-star flick or anything like that. But I can definitely say, for me personally, I definitely did find it to be an above-average thriller because of the screenplay, uh, because of the, the strong performances, and because of Larry Cohen's uh, direction and uh, other uh, aspects of the film. So... And, and I just have a, I, I honestly, I also have a soft spot for films that deal with intense subject matter, like having kids in danger, and not only that, but with simple, but also effective plot lines. And one of the most effective, uh, simple plot lines is the one that involves a murder witness, and the wit witness happens to be a kid, and you have this character who comes into the life of the mother and is not who he appears to be. And unlike some other films that would happen that would come out years later after this, you could honestly argue that Larry Cohen kind of originated the erotic thriller with this particular film. Special effects, I don't think really was, was that originator. I think this might have been that originating point because this came out three years before Fatal Attraction and something like that. But in this instance, it's a male. And that's another reason why it's so interesting to me is because most of the time, yes, you do have some films like Sleeping with the Enemy or, or what is it, Consenting Adults. You did have some other films like that that dealt with the male who is the, the crazy one. But in this instance... Brad isn't really a character who's a sociopath. He's he's just a guy who's trying to make ends meet and he's doing it the wrong way and he's fallen into uh, the path of the mafia and has fallen into their 
uh, gaze. You know, he's being manipulated by the mafia because he, he even says things like, if you want something in life, you got to take it. And because of the way the the hand that life has dealt him, he's living this, this uh, seedy life. But you can see these glimpses throughout the film of a a guy, a man who wants to do the right thing, who wants to make things right. And that's completely different than a lot of these particular films because a lot of the time they're just one note psychos. They're they don't want to, you know, do the right thing. They're they're like Carter Hayes and Pacific Heights. And I love I love Pacific Heights. But he's a pretty fairly one note character. He's a sociopath. He's your typical sociopath. And so is the character uh, played, I think it's Patrick Virgin and Sleeping with the Enemy, and so and Kevin Klein's character in, in Consenting Adults, and so on and so forth. These are all characters who are fairly one note uh, when it comes to male uh, psychos in these uh, erotic thrillers. But Johnny is, 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 is a completely different breed. He's, he's, he has more facets to his character. And that's another reason why I, I find the film to be pretty good. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about the movie. I've talked about this movie longer than anyone else has probably talked about this film. I, I would say check this film out uh, if, if, you, if it sounds interesting to you. I don't even know if the trailer is even on YouTube. I looked for it, but I couldn't find it. But it is on the DVD. Um... And definitely check this out if, if you're a fan of Larry Cohen. Because this is one of those films that I think that any Larry Cohen fan should definitely watch at least once. You might not care for it. You might not like it as much as I did. But it's definitely a film you should watch to uh, really showcase his uh, versatility as a director. And to, you know, once again, show why he is, is so dearly missed. So anyway, um, thanks for watching my review of Perfect Strangers, and as always, I will see you later. See ya.